uh, communication officer? Yes, sir. That was a pretty good CPX we had today, but you know, I think the brigade had our command post a little bit far forward. Oh, that was to our advantage. It gave us short wire lines to the battalion CP. Yes, but uh, you know, I've been thinking we should let the battalion commander select his own command post. Oh, we can get our wire lines in much quicker if the regimental commander does this. Then we know where to send them. True, uh, but tell me, what is the relation between the command post and the axis of signal communication? The axis indicates the points to which the command post moves during the attack. I see, but uh, how do you go about selecting these points? Well, take your map, or on the ground. On the map, see where this road crosses the stream? Low ground, woods, cover, routes to the right and left, front and rear. Yes, that looks like a pretty good command post site. Yes, sir, and here's another. House in the woods, head of a stream, reverse slope, road leading to the front. Well, uh, how many of those points do you select? As far forward as the attack is going, we have to give the commander control of his troops throughout the action. How far apart should uh, these points be? Well, that depends on the terrain and the size of the unit. I'd say for a battalion, uh, 1,000 yards for a regiment, about 1,500. But look here. You've got a good road running right up this zone of action. Why don't you call that road the axis of signal communication? That road may be denied by hostile fire. And anyway, we aren't interested in roads. We simply designate the key points to which the command post moves as the attack progresses. Well, must the command post uh, move right up to the exact point indicated and set up there? No, but the point indicated should be easily identified. The command post will be undercover somewhere close by. You seem to attach a good deal of importance to this command post and axis business. Uh, the axes are the framework of the signal system. It gives the commander control in battle. But suppose you didn't have a map, or a map of such small scale that you couldn't select an axis for a unit like the regiment or battalion. How about your control then? Well, control would be more difficult, but we'd get it. How? By teamwork between the units. As the lower unit command post moved, a man would be sent back to guide up wire parties and messengers. I see. You talk a lot about control. Uh, is that the only reason for signal communication? That's the principal reason. But don't forget, it also brings the commander his information. You're right, Baron Boyle. Without information and control, no man could command even a squad. But we'll have a real chance to test our training soon. Anything definite in that, Colonel? Yes. I've just had a telephone conversation with the division commander. We entrain for the front next week. Find the executive. Yes, sir. Good. The regimental communication officer has trained his platoon. The communication officer, platoon sergeant, and orderly constitute platoon headquarters. The message center section operates the message center at the regimental command post, provides mounted, dismounted, and motorcycle messenger service, handles pigeons and pyrotechnics. The radiovisual section operates radio, telegraph, lamps, and panels. Its equipment is hauled on the communication cart. The wire section operates the telephone system at the regimental command post and installs and maintains the lines forward to the battalions. Its equipment is hauled on the cart and in the truck. A red division is organizing a position along the line Guernsey Green Valley with a strong covering force forward of Hill 480. Blue 9th Division is developing for the attack. Blue 29th Infantry, leading the East Column, covered by its 1st Battalion, is moving into an assembly area south and west of Hill 450. While the regiment is developing, the regimental commander and part of his staff are forward on reconnaissance. The colonel has received the brigade order and is planning his own order for the attack. The main body is marching north toward the assembly area. The regimental communication platoon, preceded by the executive and part of the staff, marches at the head of the column where it can best serve the staff. The message center functions on the march as well as when halted. Messenger service is continuous. Here's a message from the first 
Our advance guard has been halted on Hill 480. That's about a mile up to the front. Yes, sir. We'll halt the headquarters while the remainder of the column develops. Ferenboy, you go forward and select temporary command posts in the vicinity of the assembly areas. Where are all, sir? Orderly? Communication officer. Here's a message from the Colonel. Colonel. Have just received the brigade order. We attack at 11 a.m. Have the battalion commanders and staff meet me at 9.30 on Hill 450, where I will issue the attack order. S1, get this information to the battalion commanders. You know where they are. Yes, sir. Baron Ball. You report to S3 up on Hill 450. You'll want your recommendations for paragraph 5 of the field order. I'll be up later with the battalion commanders. Very well, sir. Orderly? Oh, here you are. Then take the seat. Yes, sir. I'm going up forward with the colonel. You're in charge here. I'm from the artillery looking for Colonel Porter. I want to arrange fire support for the attack. Colonel is up forward on Hill 450. It's about a mile up here. He'll be there at 9.30 and make the arrangements for your artillery fires at that time. Thanks. Good morning, sir. I hear we're attacking at 11 o'clock. Yes, have a seat. I'm glad you came up. I'm preparing some notes for the Colonel's order. He'll be here in a few minutes. I want to ask you about paragraph five. What's the plan of the attack, sir? Well, you can see on my map here, the line of departure along here, regimental right boundary here, left boundary here, two battalions in assault. First on the right, boundary between battalions here, the regimental axis here is taken from the brigade order. You can see they've got our command post here in the vicinity of the water tank. I'd like to get your recommendations for command posts and axes for our assault battalions. I'll be ready in a few minutes, sir. I've been studying the map. I only needed those boundaries. May I use your map? Sure. All righty, sir. First battalion command post here. Its access points here, here, and here. Second battalion command post here. Its access here, here, and here. That looks pretty good. I'll put them in the order just you have them on the map. Can I go ahead with the installations? Yes. Uh, pick out a suitable command post right here in the vicinity of the water tank somewhere and get set up. Very well, sir. Orderly. Go back to the platoon and bring them up under cover to a point just northwest of the water tank. Yes, sir. Battalion commanders will be up in a few minutes, sir. Good. Captain Raymond, you go with Farnball and help locate the command post. Then come back and hear the colonel's order. Very well, sir. Although the point named by the brigade order as the location for the command post is at the water tanks on Hill 450, 
The actual site selected by the communication officer and S1 is in a ravine under cover a short distance away. The water tank serves merely as a guide to the approximate location. Oh. Hey, Farron boy, how did this strike you for location of the command post? Looks like a good spot, sir. Good cover? Near the main road and near the point named on the axis. Will you go ahead and start the command post installations? I'm going back to join the colonel. Where do you want to put the commanding officer and staff, sir? Oh, right under these trees right there. Right over here, sir? That's good. All right, sir. Take my horse. Section chief is coming right up, sir. Fine. This will be our command post site. The enemy holds the ridge a mile to the front. We attack at 11 o'clock with the 1st Battalion on the right, the 2nd on the left, the 3rd in reserve in the woods 500 yards to the west. The 1st Battalion, 83rd Field Artillery, supports the attack. Sergeant Warrior Chief. Yes, sir. Lay one circuit to the 1st Battalion and one to the 2nd, as shown by this line route map. Watch out for the artillery and brigade lines coming in. Simplex for telegraph to brigade and assault battalion. Put the switchboard on the left of those two trees. A local phone for the commanding officer there, one for the staff there, and one in the message center. Sergeant message center chief. Yes, sir. Put the message center there by that log. Messengers there by that tree. Have them follow the wire lines to the assault battalion and this trail to the reserve and to the brigade. Animals, 50 yards behind the switchboard. Sergeant Radio. Yes, sir. Set the radio stations up in the edges of the woods on that hill. Telegraph to the brigade and assault battalion. Are there any questions? Well, how about the panel ground, sir? Oh, yes, the panel ground. Put them in the open space on that hill near the radio station. That's all. Let's get going. Orderly. My horse back over there behind that tree. Yes, sir. Oh, hello there, Mitson. The dog's right behind me, sir. Fine, fine. I want to explain the situation to you. The communication platoon arrives with the communication card and its equipment. Radio equipment was left up the trail at the radio station. Telephone equipment is now unloaded near the site chosen for the switchboard. The wire chief instructs the non-commissioned officers who are to lay the lines to the assault battalions. This line route map shows that one circuit is to be laid from a telephone central at the command post of the 29th Infantry to the command post of each of the assault battalions. These circuits terminate in a telephone at the battalion command post. This map indicates not only the number of circuits but the routes to be followed. In this case, the wire chief decides to use the mule and communication cart with real cart attached in laying the line to the 1st Battalion Command Post, as this is the longer route and with cover. This hand-drawn cart will lay the line to the 2nd Battalion Command Post. At the radio station, one set has already gone into operation and the other is being set up. The sets are light, highly portable, and easily put in operation. A third set, identical with the who, is carried on the platoon truck for use during movement of the command posts or to replace a defective set. Operating on different frequencies, the two sets work from the same location simultaneously without interference. One works in the regimental net with the assault battalions and the supporting light artillery. The other works in the brigade net with the brigade set or with the 30th Infantry. The radio section also operates the telegraph. This man is bringing a wire from the switchboard at this command post which he attaches to the telegraph set. The other end of the wire goes to a repeating coil at the switchboard. At the radio station, it is connected to the telegraph instrument, also known as the buzzer phone. The other side of the telegraph instrument is connected to ground. This circuit permits the simultaneous operation of the telegraph and the telephone over the same pair of wires without interference. The repeating coil magnetically transfers the alternating voice currents from the line to the telephone circuits without affecting the telegraph. While permitting the continuous current in both sides of the line to combine in the telegraph instrument and return through the ground without affecting the telephones. 
The telegraph to the 2nd Battalion is now available. The operator signs off on the radio and establishes communication by telegraph, reserving the radio for emergency use if the wire goes out of order or becomes jammed with traffic. The switchboard is a 12-line monochord board and serves to connect any one of the local phones at the regimental command post to any one of the outgoing trunks or to connect any two of the trunks directly through the command post. A general view of the command post site with installations in accordance with the communication officer's instructions reveals the command post proper in the hollow with the message center centrally located close to the staff whose phones are on these two trees. The motorcycle messengers and runners are within call of the message center. The switchboard and terminal strip are installed on these two trees a little distance away from the main traffic of the command post, where the operator will be disturbed as little as possible. The radio station is up on the hill, somewhat isolated from other activities, and the panel ground is out in the open area on the hill where a plane can drop and pick up messages. All animals are placed together in one group some distance in rear of the switchboard, not tethered indiscriminately about the command post. The wire from 1st Brigade command post is being laid forward to the 29th Infantry. The brigade detail enters the command post with a wire cart which laid this line. The personnel are from the communication platoon headquarters company 1st Brigade. They test tie and tag the line and deliver it to the regimental wire section. A lineman from the artillery battalion brings a line which he drags along the ground as the distance is short. The lines which have just been brought into the regimental command post are trunk lines from the 1st Brigade and the supporting artillery battalion. All the trunk lines now connecting the regiment to superior and subordinate units are shown in this line route map. Hello there, artillery liaison officer. What's on your mind? The main thing is this trick hat. Those hats are a damn nuisance. Say, uh, where's that right assault battalion of yours? Want to get this liaison line up to them. All right. Here we are here on the map. Check. Follow this trail up here until you come to a railroad crossing. Yeah, I know where that is. And turn to the north. About 500 yards further on, see those woods? I've got it. Right in that ravine there. Okay. I've got a wire party out there moving over that way now. I hope I can pick them up. They'll guide me in. I think you can all right. What's right? All right, good luck. Bye. Oh, communication chief. Yes, sir? I'm going out to check upon this 1st Battalion wire party. They aren't in yet, and they should be in by now. I'll be back in about 30 minutes. Yes, sir. Orderly? Hey, friend, boss. Yes, sir. How are your communications? We're in by radio to both battalions, but this right battalion isn't in by wire yet, sir. I'm just going out to check up on that, sir. Well, I wish you'd get that wire in as soon as possible. Yes, sir, I'll, I'll do that, sir. Uh, one more thing, sir. Our truck isn't up yet, and we're going to need that for a move, sir. Well, I think there was a bit of traffic jam back here by the bridge. I've sent the executive officer back to straighten that out. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'll be on my way. The communication officer proceeds to carry out instructions by riding out along the 1st Battalion line to see if anything can be done to expedite its installation. In the meantime, the wire detail has been laying wire with as, as little delay as possible. A road has to be crossed. A corporal finds the surface too hard to permit burying the line readily and decides to make an overhead crossing. Slack is pulled off and the cart proceeds, leaving two linemen behind to make the crossing. The first ties in at the base and carries the wire aloft to a point high enough so that the wire at its lowest point will be at least 14 feet above the ground to protect it from traffic. Across the road, the second lineman carries the wire aloft to the necessary height. He takes up the slack and makes the tie. Having secured the wire at the top, he then ties in at the base of the tree and completes the operation by attaching a tag to identify the circuit. A railroad crossing occasions only a slight delay. Enough slack is pulled off to permit splicing and tying, and the cart proceeds leaving the splicing for the linemen as they come up from the road crossing. The line is cut and passed under the rails. Insulation is removed and a square knot splice is made. This type of splice being used because of the stiffness of the steel strands used in field wire. 
a staggered splice is made with the joints on both sides of the line eight or ten inches apart to minimize possibilities of short circuit in case the insulation comes off. After the splice has been taped, the lineman attaches a test phone to the line beyond the splice and assures himself that the circuit is good through the splice and all the way back to the regimen. Well, it's about time for the jump off. I wonder if the 30th infantry on our left got up on time. You know, the going's pretty rough over in their sector. We might ask the Division Air Service to check up on that for us, Colonel. Have you contact with the Air Service? Yes, I think we can get a message off the plane. I saw one around here a bit ago. I wish you would. I'll get the message by panel right away. Fine. The message is brought to the panel ground for transmission to the plane by means of the air ground liaison code. The section chief consults the code and calls the number which in the code in use at the time means locate unit on my. As soon as the pilot observes this signal, he throttles his motor three times, signifying understood. The second code group is assigned, and panels run out, completing the message with the word left. Locate unit on my left. A third code number is given, and the panels are displayed, which signify proceed on your mission. On observing this signal, the plane goes off to locate the 30th Infantry. The panel details roll up and camouflage their code panels. Inasmuch as there is no hostile aircraft in the vicinity, the identification panel is left out to mark the position until the plane returns from its mission and drops the message. It is quickly recovered and brought directly to S3, the originator of the request for information. S3 notes its contents and takes it to the colonel. Regiment on your left, now moving up to line of departure on hill north of benchmark 440. Sign, Lieutenant Huggins, observer. This is in a reply to a message we just sent to plane. Oh yes. <clears throat> colonel, I got that traffic jam straightened out on the road back there in the rear. I left F4 in charge, and he has the situation well in hand. Good. I've been somewhat concerned about those combat trains. What's the situation up front, Colonel? Well, I just sent S2 forward to examine some prisoners captured by the 1st Battalion during their advance guard action. Right. By the way, Breslon, I wish you'd get both battalions on telephone. I want to know if the battalion commanders are ready to jump off. Very well, sir. I'll have the operator plug you through to both battalions at once. Fine. Very well. Keep me informed. Line to the first battalion is in, sir. Oh, yes, I've just been talking to both battalions. In the meantime, the command post of the first battalion has been established. The identification panel is displayed in a small clearing. One radio set only is installed as there is no radio forward from the battalion. A single telephone fastened to a tree awaits connection to the regimental line when it arrives. The message center is centrally located as it was at the regiment and its functions are the same. Communications officer. Yes, sir. Communications all in, Murphy? We have the radio of the regiment of the 2nd Battalion, Colonel, and the messages have come from the salt company. Is the regimental wire in yet? No, sir. We expect it very soon, though, sir. Yes. Executive. Yes, sir. I'm going out and visit the uh, front line companies and watch them deploy. About I, where the, uh, I want to note the uh, result of the artillery preparation. About what will your location be, Colonel? I'm going first to the left of the salt company, that right through there, line of those trees, and I'm going over to Hill 410, the first hill over this crest in that direction. It looks like a possible OP later on. Uh, Murphy, send a messenger from each assault company and send my orderly with me. Very well, sir. Hurry! Yes, yes, sir! Tomlinson! Yes, sir! Come here. Go to the Colonel right away. Line, Where you want it? Right over here. All right, let's go. Corporal, get that line hooked up on that telephone right away. Yes, sir. No switchboard set up here. I'm a dream attention to second of first battalion. Okay. Let's go to the Yeah. Let's by telegraph. Yeah. Hey. Hey. 
man who wants to line this forward. I'll drive the detail out. Get that line out right away, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Both the linemen. Oh, take this car, run the line after the battalion commander. All right. Mr. Ogden, guide you out. There's only one ball of water on this baby buggy. Hey, how about a hand up? The wire which is now being laid forward is spliced to the line which was brought forward from the regiment, resulting in a party line for the battalion commander's telephone and the phone at the battalion command post. A switchboard at the battalion command post to avoid this party line is not considered necessary. Battalion commander, want to get this liaison line up to him. He's gone forward. I just sent a line up to him a short time ago. Go follow our wire line up. Okay. I'll leave a scout sergeant and telephone operator on this line and extend the head of it on up to the battalion commander. Very good. Say, in case this uh, wire goes out, I've got a radio I can fall back on any time. All right, that'll be fine. All right, thanks. Good enough. All right, Corporal. Bring a detail right down here. The artillery lines now being laid are used exclusively by artillery personnel who transmit over them the battalion commander's request for fire support. They parallel approximately the infantry lines which provide the regimental commander with information and furnish the means for control of his battalions. You men stay down. What time you got, Johnson? 10 6. Check. The troops in position? Uh, yes, sir. Fine. You've got contact with the tanks and machine guns? Yes, sir. Good. I'll be on Hill 410. Good luck. Any letters here from the assault company? Yes, sir. One from each company. Here's a message for each assault company giving the location of the battalion ammunition distributing point. Get them out right away. All right, you cut me around, though, here. Get these to your company commanders. You know where they are. Yellow Red? Executive officer? Yes, sir. Major Clark, telephone, sir. Executive speaking. Trail Ben 4, 5 4. Yes, sir. We'll move up at once. Communications officer. Yes, sir. Our attack has taken the enemy front lines. The battalion commander directed we close out here at once and move to the vicinity of Trail Ben 4, 5 4. I'm going up there right now. You come up with the platoon. Very well, sir. Lovazan? Yes, sir. Come here. We're moving out. I want you to stay here and direct any people forward who are looking for our command post. Our new command post will be located at Road Bend 4, 54. You get that? Yes, sir. All right, Sergeant Justice? Yes, sir. Notify the section chiefs to close station and follow me forward along the wire line as soon as they're ready. Very well, sir. That's all. The battalion command post is very quickly closed out. Each man in the radio and wire section has a definite task to perform, and the cart is quickly loaded. The message center moves out first, immediately followed by the remainder of the personnel, leaving only one man behind to direct messengers and others forward to the new location. A mounted messenger from the regiment arrives and is directed to the new location by the contact man. S3 speaking. 
Oh, yes, Colonel Rice. Just a minute till I get this map oriented here. Shoot. Salt Troops, 1st Battalion, now on the line, Hill 470, benchmark 449. Repeat that last, please. Command Post, 1st Battalion, now moving from Trail Bend 454 to Ravine East Slope of Hill 485. I got you. Thanks. Goodbye. You're right. It's time we were moving up. Communication officer. Yes, sir. A uh, fern ball. Our first battalion has taken Hill 485. S3 and I are going forward to observe the action. Prepare to move the command post to the vicinity of Trail Bend 4, 54. We'll join you there in about an hour. The executive officer will remain here. Very well, sir. Oh, communication chief. Here, sir. Get the forward echelon ready to move up. Leave the truck to bring up the rest of the platoon. Yes, sir. The forward echelon of the communication platoon moves out, leaving only a skeleton force to operate the old command post until the installation is completed at the new location. Was this the 1st Battalion command post? Yes, sir. Just moved out about 10 minutes ago. What was your setup? Where was your message center? Right by that tree, sir. Panels? Up on that hillside, sir. Have you got a wire line running out of here? Yes, sir. It comes in by this tree and goes out up that trail. All right, that's all. Join your battalion. Message center there by that tree. Staff there. Switchboard on that double tree. Local phones normal. Regimental radio station between that fallen log and the switchboard. Panels on that side hill. Brigade radio station near the panels. That's all. Let's go. Oh, Sergeant Barney, one more thing. We'll have to lay a new line to the 2nd Battalion. Yes, sir. Up this stream, across the railroad, follow that trail to the junction. That's the nearest point on their axis. Hook in with them there. Yes, sir. The new line to 2nd Battalion is made necessary to permit a direct connection instead of a circuit back through the old regimental switchboard. As soon as this line is completed, the old line is discarded, and shortly the switchboard at Hill 450 will be removed when the command post at that station closes. Well, friend boy, you all set up here? All set up, sir. Oh, uh, here's the artillery representative, Colonel. Oh, hello, Captain. Glad to see you. Colonel, are you moving your CP here now, sir? Yes, I'm going to open up here right away. Brian Boy, notify the executive to close the old location. Yes, sir, I will. And will you please notify the artillery, too? Yes, I'll, I'll Thank do you. that. Colonel, I'll stay here with you until the artillery CP comes up and we get our wire in. Good. Come look over our map with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll take care of that right away, sir. Old Lieutenant Farnborough, the Colonel just asked me some questions about the message center. I wasn't sure of the answers myself. I wanted to have a few minutes to explain to me how you operate. Well, I have a matter to take care of for the brigade right now, sir. And message center procedure is rather simple. I'm sure if you'll observe the message center, Chief, you'll get a good line on it, sir. Well, I'll hang around here and watch him then. Very well, sir. Uh, son, uh, do you still use this big 14-column book, this message center register? No, sir. We don't use that anymore. No more bookkeeping, no, huh? No, sir. Message for the 1st Battalion, sir. Yes, sir. I'll get it off right away. You see, Captain, I enter on both the original and duplicate. Time filed. 137. That's the center number. This happens to be number 25. Call sent, in this case, telegraph. Here, take us to the radio station. The radio station? I thought you were sending by telegraph. That's right. The radio section operates the telegraph. I keep the duplicate in my live file. Oh, I see. Hey, the message for the 1st Battalion, son. Send this to the 1st Battalion. What is that, Chief? The number 25 is received for at 142. Okay. I now enter on the duplicate the time the message was received for, 142. Transfer to my dead file. Simple, but a record is complete. Overlay from S3 to Brigade, Sergeant. Here's a map overlay, single copy. Of course, it has to go by messenger. Hey, motorcyclist. Well, what sort of record do you keep? I give it a message center number and enter these identifying notes in my message book so that I can trace it if lost. The addressee receives for this overlay on this delivery list. 
Here, take this to Brigade. Be sure and get a receipt for it. Okay, Sarge. Mark communication to all units Yes, in. sir. Radio? Yes, sir. All agencies to all units are okay. Fine. Keep me informed. I'm learning a lot here, Fairmore. There's your ticket, Sarge. Here's our receipt for that overlay. You filed that? Yes, with the message blank on which I kept a record of it. Both go in my dead file. Boy, I got this one just in time. How come? Mrs. Air Chief, telegraph second battalion's up. The line went out before I had a chance to receive for it. For the colonel, too. Get the lead out of your pants and get that over to the colonel. Yell the operator. Yell the white. Uh-oh. Let's do it, Chief. Line of second battalion is out. I got gotcha. you. Sorry, sir. The line of second battalion is out of order. Sir, the line of the second battalion is out. What's that? The line of the second battalion is out. I wish those damn tanks would watch where they're going. How does that line to the second battalion ring? The ring's open, sir. Have you touched it in the board? Yes, sir. All right, get out on the line, find the brake, splice, test, and then come on back. Yes, sir. Message for the second battalion, Sergeant. That line of the second battalion is still out. We'll have to send this one by radio. Here, take this to the radio station. There's a radio encoded. Don't you use the radio until the wire lines go out? No, sir. You see, unless a radio message is specially authorized to be sent clear by the colonel, it has to be encoded. To avoid that delay, we send by telegraph whenever possible. Well, how do you handle incoming messages? We'll see. He's getting one now. He's receiving a priority message before he transmits the outgoing. Okay. Here, Code Clark. There's some work for you. He files a code copy and delivers the clear to the addressee. Well, then, doesn't it go through you for record? No, sir. All incoming messages are delivered direct. Sergeant, the colonel wants to know if his message to the 1st Battalion about security of the right flank got through. Yes, sir. Here it is. It is my number 25 and was receded for at 1.42 p.m. Good. Thanks. Hello, sir. Red rocket just fired by the 1st Battalion. That's the signal to the artillery. Where's your fire? I must not have seen it. You better have paid it. Message center? Yes. Have a red rocket fired. Yes, sir. Battery right. Message by that plane, Sergeant. Signal that plane to wait. Here, take this to the panel detail. There's the identification panel with a wait signal. Okay, they probably want to pick up. There it is. Pick up message. Okay, I'll swing into the wind. Drop it there, then back to the field. Okay. Say, son, have you got any more uh, trick methods of sending messages? Message for brigade, Sergeant. All right, sir. Here's a short one. Watch how I send this one. Get me a bird. I copy the message on a pigeon message blank.
Darn, I guess you won't get a receipt for that message, will you? No, sir, you're right. That bird only flies one way. But most of them get there. Anyway, I have a duplicate here, which I can send by another pigeon if necessary. Oh. How do you handle messages coming in by messenger? There's one coming now. Here's the message for S3. Right over there. Don't you keep any record of it? No, sir, not for messages coming in from other headquarters. Thing going back to first battalion? No. Well, I have a pretty good idea now how the message center functions. Yes, sir. The captain has seen how the message center handles incoming and outgoing messages. Well, I've got some work to do now, Sergeant. I wonder if I can have that dead file of messages. I use that on the unit journal. Sure it is, sir. information from it. Sergeant, I haven't seen you use a telephone at all. Don't you ever use it? No, sir. We reserve the telephone service for the colonel and staff mainly. Occasionally, the communication officer uses this phone. Good idea. All wire lines have been repaired. Wire brigade for replacement. Reporting all objectives taken. You'll hold your battalion in readiness until further orders. 